to our study of Hebrews. Today we'll be in our final lesson and we are following the Smith and Hellways formation series. Today we'll be looking at chapter 13 of Hebrews. You know, the first 12 chapters of Hebrews really builds an argument. The writer is trying to build an argument about the sufficiency and the supremacy of Christ. But all of a sudden we jump into chapter 13 and it gets very dense and it's like a driveway conversation. You know what I mean when I say a driveway conversation. That's the conversation you have with your child when you've got them all packed up, you're sending them back to college uh, for, for the, after being home for the weekend and you're peppering them with questions. Do you have enough gas? Do you have cash? Don't forget to call when you get there. Um, did, you, did you get this? Did you get that? And we're giving them all kinds of advice and reminders because we love them and because we're sensing that our time is running out and we just want to cram it all in. Well, that's the sense we get when we take a look here at chapter 13. Now, much of, of this advice, there's many pieces of advice in these 13 um, verses here, but much of this advice we will struggle with as modern day Christians. So I'm just going to pick on three ideas that really spoke to me this week and, and let's take a look at these together. Starting with verse one, the writer says, let mutual love continue. Well, what does he mean by mutual? Uh, perhaps what he's talking about is the love that we experience. God loved us so, so much he sent his son to die for us that we would have life and life everlasting. And there's this mutual love where we love him back. He loves us and, and in response to that. There's this love that we love back to him. But I think it also refers to we're to reflect that love to other people. You know, the gospel does change relationships. The writer points to several examples of relationships uh, that get changed. He talks about hospitality to strangers. He talks about ministering to the prisoners. He even talks about faithfulness in marriage. In all three of these situations, those relationships are to be different because of the love of God. So moving down to verse five, another point is keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. That's difficult for us. You know, as a young man in the 80s, I entered the business world and it was a time when there were plenty of voices in the marketplace you know, encouraging us to never be satisfied, to never be content, to level our game up always, to always aspire for the next the next plateau or the next level. There was always a bigger backyard to play in. And so there was no time to rest. It was just push, 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 get to the next level. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. There's quite honestly nothing wrong with ambition. And there's a lot of good that can come when people are successful in their line of work. However, I think he's referring to the motivation. You see, if the reason you push is all about you and what you're after, it can be a problem. You know, the people that I really looked up to as my early mentors, I didn't realize it at the time. Well, what I did admire about them at the time was, you know, their success, their worldly, outwardly success and how people treated them and felt about them. And I, you know, that was very attractive to me as a young man. Later in life, as I really got to know their story, I realized that they were really content personally, but they had this desire to use their gifts. They felt they understood where God was working in the world. They felt they had been blessed with gifts, fruits of the spirit, and they were trying to be faithful to do everything they could to use those for the benefit of others. And you see, I think that is a different type of contentment that the writer is, is referring to, the type of contentment that comes when putting others ahead of ourselves. Take a look at the last idea here, which is in verse 16. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Do not neglect to do good. You know, I think it's important that we recognize here what he means, the writer means when he says good. The opposite of good is not necessarily bad. The opposite might be, you know, the opposite of good might be self-interest or selfish interest. Okay, so when he says do good, he refers to it as a sacrifice. So we have the sense here that we can make a choice. Don't neglect to miss the opportunity to put yourself second and put others first. 
And he says that when we make that type of sacrifice, it's pleasing to God. You know, I think it's where we get a chance to walk in the shoes of Christ. Anytime we self-sacrifice, we get to participate in the spirit of Christ. And, and, and we know that God is pleased because we, through the Holy Spirit, get that inner peace that can only come from ser serving other people's needs and interests before our own. Well, in conclusion, I think the thing we want to be clear on is that the writer is not talking to people, talking to his audience about these ideas as a means of earning their justification or earning their salvation, but really as a way of living out their faith. You know, there's a famous quote that is credited to St. Francis of Assisi that goes something like this, preach the gospel always, and if necessary, use your words. And I think that's what we're to remember is that a life of faith, we don't earn our, we don't earn God's grace, but we choose to live out in a way that expresses our faith. And the writer of Hebrews wanted this early audience, and he also wants to share with us that living out the life of faith and behaving in a certain way are true marks of the Christian faith. Well, I hope this has been a good study for you this month. I hope that today's text uh, is bringing some blessing to you. I hope you'll join us again next week when we continue with a new unit. Until then, I hope you have a great week. God bless you, and we'll see you again next week.